Hello, everybody, and welcome to another top 10 edition of Magic Mics, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hello, friends. Ruben Bressler. May the fourth be with had been with you when wow, you watch this video way to date the show wow we date the well, show that's hard it's because i'm wearing my bb8 tie for the show today oh, okay. that i wanted to uh you know put it out there did you watch any star wars today i did i watched okay. uh uh last jedi uh earlier in a watch party mm. um and i've been watching a couple of them in a in a watch party for uh, twitch channel you mentioned solo too right yeah, Solo. Yeah. I think Solo gets a bad rap. I liked Solo. I hoped I wanted them to make more of those because I think it's a cool movie. Um, but it was released at the wrong time, and eh, whatever. And it had the, the director's problem, and like whatever. Yeah, I thought it turned out cool though. It I had turned a fun out okay. Time with it. It's a, it's a fun little movie, but like they didn't need a little you know fun you know crime heist movie. They needed like giant galactic yeah. blah, I mean, there blah, blah, was a blah. couple things that went wrong with it and so it stumbled over the stumbling blocks and it wasn't the big blowout star wars that they wanted it to be my unpopular opinion though is that star it might not even be that unpopular is that star wars movies that aren't about jedi are better than star wars oh uh media with jedi i prefer rogue one i prefer solo i prefer mandalorian rogue i prefer one was clone a hot wars mess. Rogue One's a hot mess. You get out of here. That movie Rogue was One awful. Is the Rogue One is the best. Oh, Rogue One has the best third act. It has a good no, third Rogue act. Rogue One is the best of the, the movie. Star Destroyers. All right, we got to move wow. on here. All right, I come on. I'm sorry. Looking forward to reading so, the comments this week. Gonna, Goodness gracious. We also Can't began, I'm... other than Star Wars fights, with our choice of the top comment from last week. In a segment we got honorable mention. Well, Ruben will tell us who was the most eloquent in letting us know what card we did not choose as one of our top ten cantrips. Ruben? I'm one with the Force, and the Force is with me. Mm -hmm. uh, Keep saying Jonathan it. Hecht was the winner this week, who writes, So back in the day when Collected Company ruled over Standard, due to acquiring the cards needed before people realized their potential, I ended up with a Coco deck. At that time, I also started to rent an apartment in the town where the university I study at is, and that led me to start a new circle at a local LGS. They were just planning a game day event for my first day at the store, and let's just say that I was the only one with a Coco deck there, and people were not really expecting a Coco player to show up. Again, it was my first day there. And every time I won a match during the event, my opponent would say something like, I should have put Hallowed Moonlight in my sideboard. The event ended with me winning and making an apology speech for being at a, a metagame boogeyman, but ever since that day, I joined the big warm community of Jerusalem Magic player base. And, uh... Hallowed Moonlight is the winner. Mm. Hallowed Moonlight, for those who don't know, is a rare from Magic Origins for a white and a generic mana. It is an instant that says, until end of turn, if a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead and draw a card. This actually won a Pro Tour in a main deck. Yeah. Really? When, uh, yeah, back when, I think that it was in response to Rally the Ancestors. Hmm. Um, what, this was like a really big thing for Rally and Coco, and there was a bunch of people cheating stuff into play. Right. So, huh. Aaron, I'm sorry that Hallowed Moonlight had to win, it's but... Fine. It's fine. But it did. And Not so, everybody's perfect. Congratulations to Jonathan. Please contact Aaron on social media before she blocks you on all of them. <laughs> It's just a thing or we just do. Just a couple. Here. Just a couple. It'll be fun. It'll be like a shell game. Like, which one are you blocked on? Oh, oh. Right. Thanks You'll again. Be blocked on all of them if you try to enter the battlefield from anywhere except for being canceled. <laughs> That's true. Thanks <laughs> Not again. Not by to, me, you both. Thanks again to CoolStuffInc.com for sponsoring this giveaway and stay tuned for our top 10 list this week. And maybe you can win next week's free gift certificate because this week we are talking about cyclers. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with a buddy of mine and he was like, you got to have this card on it. And I'm like, well, well, let's put it this way. Astral Slide. Astral Slide is not on my list because it yeah. does not have cycling. And I explained. Yeah. Sure. He was like, you, you can't not have that be yeah. I'm like, no, you can. It's fine. It's if just. If we were going to put fluctuators and lightning rifts on our or list, Leviathans. we would have. Or Leviathan. Leviathan. Man could come in. Pam, Leviathan, top, top 10 cycler. Whatever. But yeah, so all my cards have cycling, and that's cool. Yeah. Um, that said, any any sort of philosophy stuff you guys want to get out of the way? All of them have cycling, no big deal? Uh, just, they all have cycling. I wanted, I didn't know whether to include certain cards because they're parts of cycles of cycling cards. Oh. Um, and also basic land cycling. 
mm-hmm. or type cycling, as the case may be. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a couple of cards out there. For example, uh, there's a card that has wizard cycling, for right. example. So something like that. I didn't differentiate as if it has the word cycling, even if it's basic land cycling, sliver cycling, whatever, what whatever happens, it is. It's on my list. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really break it down that that much. Um, the big thing for me was I just tried to pick cards I hadn't picked before. So, for example, I had the Cyclone uh, in my top ten Ikoria list, and so I've already let it be known that I think the card is really sweet. I didn't pick mm-hmm. Hollow One on my list because I've, I've caped for Hollow One before, and so I really just tried to find you know ten cards that I haven't talked about as much or at all, just just mm-hmm. some fresh meat. Fair enough. So fresh get... meat is not on here, so no. Fair There's enough. Some... Does fresh meat have have cycling? I no, but I didn't want it to be the Leviathan on my list. You know. Wow. Okay. Could have just came out of left field, Leviathan. This, what? <laughs> Air- it's been five what's, minutes. What's that reference to? Like, like was that number like in our early thirties and top tens? That was my my top ten finishers. My number two yes. was Leviathan. Top ten finisher. Oh my god! All right, so let's get started here, Aaron. What is your number ten? My number ten is a card I find really, really exciting. Um, I didn't even realize how this card. I'd, I'd seen this card. I thought I had read this card. I thought I understood this card. But it wasn't until last week that I realized I had read it all wrong. And I was already a fan of the card before. But when I realized how it actually works, I'm now even more inclined to work with it. Uh, my number ten is Amida Seas. Um, so I'm going to see is this from Ikoria. It's one colorless and a blue. It's an enchantment. It says, whenever you draw a card, put a four shadow counter on ominous seas, and then you remove eight four shadow counters from ominous seas, and you create an eight, eight blue Kraken creature token, and it has cycling of two colorless. I thought you had to sacrifice the ominous seas. Uh, oh, right. no. no. And so if that's all it takes, you know, blue is the color for drawing cards. And so there has to be a way to break this thing. Uh, Saffron Olive had tweeted this in conjunction with greater good yep. uh, which is a green enchantment mm-hmm. and i was like i am completely in so um i want to find room for this somewhere i think it's brilliant and i hope somebody just breaks it in half oh yeah. my god Greater good draws your entire deck uh, yeah <laughs> which it's not tough to uh win at that point mm. it's incredible. also just a powerhouse in draft and in standard mm-hmm. um it, it is an extremely potent card it comes down early and it also has cycling, so mm-hmm. if you don't want multiples, you can cycle the extra away and get an extra counter on the, the one that you play. It, it, you know, and there was something that Mark Rosewater was, was talking this week about power level and magic and power level and standard and how good these cards should be and are and are perceived and whatever. And, like, I just certainly know that I have came from a world where I expected this to sacrifice itself when you got the crack. Sure, yeah. Because that's like sort of thematically what's happening, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to seize, goes, boom, boom, he smashes out. But it's like, no, today's magical, very powerful standard world, we it don't. It just stays forever. It yeah. just stays forever and just keeps making 8-8s for you because that's modern magic right now. So <laughs> it's 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 amazing. Yeah. I, I oh, like yeah. the fun toys, the big, fun, crazy toys. Because um, there was an article today also on MTG Goldfish about, like, you know, do we want really powerful stuff in Standard? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Sure. I thought Ikoria was a blast. Yeah. Um, that said, Ruben, what's number 10? Speaking of Ikoria, my number 10 is from Ikoria. And Ooh. it might be the card that is the most likely to be banned in a format that isn't a companion okay. from Ikoria. And that's because it's Dranith Stinger. Mm. Oh my god. Dranith Stinger is a colorless and a red for a 2-2. Whenever you cycle another card, Dranith Stinger deals one damage to each opponent. It has cycling of a colorless. Pay a colorless and discard this card. Draw a card. Cycling for a colorless is ridiculous, uh, as we have seen in many, many formats in the past. Uh, but currently in Pauper, because there is a Pauper Storm deck. One of the mm-hmm. few Storm cards that's still legal in Pauper is Reaping the Graves, which is a colorless and a black. It has Storm, and it returns a creature from your graveyard to your hand. And so the entire deck is nothing but Dranith Stingers, Dranith Healers, Horror of the Broken Lands, Imperius Vantasaurs, and what have you. And then you just cycle, 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 return them all with um, the black man. What's the spell called, Aaron? The black mana producer. The uh, Songs of the Damned? Songs of the Damned. Songs of the Adds Damned. Adds a black to your mana, at black mana to your mana pool for each creature in your graveyard. So you go cycle, 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 make 10 mana, reaping the graves for six, cycle, 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 draw your deck and ping them to death. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Dranith Stinger, I, I can't imagine is long for this world in Pauper. 
I, cycling now correct me if i'm wrong barring i think some some commander stuff this is the first time cycling for one generic mana has actually appeared correct on cards and i had memory leak for example of my my go-to one colorless mana card in my icoria top 10 list uh but this and the healer which gains you a life every time um right. both cycle for one both cost two for a two two and both give you a benefit when you cycle in the future mm -hmm. boy boy howdy that's our power level, y'all. Woo! Well, we're three for three in Ikoria cards for our number 10, which is pretty nice. cool. Um, while I did talk about this card first, the first time, in our top 10 Ikoria cards, I don't, I don't, it's okay. I don't care, because it's freaking great. It's not every day that Wizards puts a meme on a magic card. It's true. And when you have flying sharks, and flying sharks is like a motif for this freaking plane. It's like a meme plane. It's so yeah. ridiculous. It's and you not, have, they, yeah, they put flying sharks on multiple cards. Yes, multiple sharks somehow are flying around. Shark Typhoon is amazing. So this card, good. like I was playing the Yoria, you know, Luca deck, and it's just like playing just playing Shark Typhoon and then playing another Shark Typhoon to make a 6-6, six, six, and then yep. everything else you do just makes xx's like playing an omen gets you you know a 2-2 flying shark because that's what you do shark typhoon is a five generic mana and a blue for a six mana total rare enchantment that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell create an xx blue shark creature token with flying where x is that spell's converted mana cost it has cycling of x generic mana one generic mana and a blue so for blue one x discard this card draw a card but when you cycle it create a xx blue shark creature token with flying equal to that X that you had in there. So it's a little bit of the old school decrees and a little bit of new school, unbelievably yep. powerful. And it's just crazy in the middle of it and that it can't be countered and you get under the counter magic and the stuff with the fires, man, like Shark Typhoon is just nuts. Yeah, Fires of Invention <laughs> is the home for Shark Typhoon these days as mm -hmm. one half of it allows you to just cast it and then get future value out of everything that you play in the future. So you can go fires, untap, shark typhoon, second shark typhoon, make a 6-6, six, six, for example. Oh my god. Or you can cycle it, which doesn't count as a spell. And so mm -hmm. you can do it during your opponent's turn, for example. And oh, by the way, it draws a card, and oh, by the way, it can't be countered when you make that big flying shark token. Yeah, I like this a lot. You know, I've said it before. I think Wizards is at their best when they let their hair down. Mm -hmm. um, and they are not taking themselves too seriously in Ikoria. And that's why I think that this is one of the reasons why I think this set is so good. Um, when I first saw this card, I immediately went to Enchantress because um, they started giving us some blue enchantments and some blue constellation in mm -hmm. Theros Beyond Death. Um, and it kind of reminded me of Sigil of the Empty Throne. And so, you know, all of these cheap cantrips like the Omens that, you know, even if you don't necessarily need them, they're now sharks. And that's a really cool way to kill somebody the sharks can also eat spells, not with this spell, but just in Ikoria, there's right. a blue counter spell that is a flying shark yep. that eats a spell. And it's like, I think that's great. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Uh, it's also, it is weird to me that that shark doesn't fly. The great shark. The voracious oh, great shark and the pouncing shore shark, neither of which fly. Okay. No, which but Shark Typhoon makes flying sharks and Shabraz the Sky Shark, which is from the <laughs> commander. Yes. Uh, is the blue white commander partner uh, does fly. So some sharks fly, some sharks don't fly. Yeah. Le legendary creature, shark bird. That's where we're at, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The Simic could never. We're going to move on here to number nine, one of the first high of my uh, hires. So we're going to okay. skip me. Ruben, you got a number nine? I do, and it's part of a cycle, right. um, but it is the one that uh, that was the most prolific of the cycle. I think that that's a theme that you'll see, is that sometimes there will be a cycle of cycling cards, but one of them finds a home in a weird place mm -hmm. um, and finds a home in an exact place. And that is the case for Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Ooh. Vizier of Tumbling Sands is two colorless and a blue for a 1-3 human cleric from Amonkhet, reprinted in Commander 2020. But And it has tap, untap another target permanent. But very rarely are we actually casting Vizier because it has cycling of a colorless and a blue which is discard it and draw a card. When you cycle it, you untap target permanent. So this is very popular in the Lotus Breach decks for untapping, um, I think it's Lotus, what is it, Lotus Veil? 
the, yeah, the, uh, new one. the land, the new Hexproof land. Yeah. Um, and so that's a combo deck that basically wants to tap and uh, tap that for mana, untap it, tap it for mana, and you build up a storm count and you build up enough mana that eventually you kill your opponent with, you know, infinite mana and infinite cards. Well, well, well. I mean, this is a, a heck of... This is one of the first time, at least I, as I recall around Amonkhet, that when you cycle it... No, no, that's not true. That went all the way back to no, some of the yeah, Onslaught they, stuff. I mean, this was part of... So yeah. in Amonkhet, this was alongside Renewed Faith, which we might talk about mm. later, uh, and Stir the Sands uh, in other, you know, where it had an effect, but then when you cycled it, it had another effect, or yeah. a smaller version of that effect. Right. Uh, as I recall, this card was kind of okay in limited and didn't really do that much, but it That's also fine. is one of those cards that is something very weird and unique yeah. for a magical mana cost that can't be countered usually, uh, and that's really cool. Aaron, what is your number nine? My number nine is part of a cycle, but in my experience, it is the card from the cycle that sees the most play. Um, it's also the card from the cycle that I am most likely to play, and I have played it before. Um, the fact that you can get an instant speed uh, Drown in Sorrow if you want to, and you get to draw a card out of it, is pretty sweet. Uh, and if you have more mana to burn, you can wipe the entire board and draw a whole bunch of cards. Uh, my number nine is Decree of Pain. Um, so Decree of Pain is six colorless and two black. If you pay full price for it, it's a sorcery. Um, it's says destroy all creatures they cannot be regenerated and then draw a card for each creature destroyed this way or you can cycle it for three colorless and two black and then when you cycle it uh, all creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn so very versatile card part of the decree cycle there was one of every color um, I don't really see the other ones too much maybe the white one um, but this is the one that really speaks to me and you know having a board wipe that you can adjust if you want the the full enchilada or if you just need to draw in sorrow you get to draw at least a card either way um, um, I really like this. All five of the decrees I know have seen play uh, either in Constructed or in Commander. Hmm. Um, the uh, the black one I think is probably the most popular Commander. Maybe Decree of Silence, which is the blue one. Which okay. counter uh, spells. Because it's a counter spell cycling card, which is a lot. Uh, the red one, which is Decree of Annihilation, I think. Ooh was uh was a, a good card for those joira of the gitu decks that were popular way at the beginning of commander that one um, started to get a little bit of um attention again because there was a card there is a card in the new commander set that says like the first card you cycle is free ooh. and john medina was like oh there you go free yep. decree of annihilation <laughs> it's like yeah. no and when you cycle decree of annihilation i think it destroys all the land yeah oh and it's gosh. like oh which is God. absurd like uncounterable no. armageddon that draws a card yeah that's a lot um but yeah decree of pain uh extremely popular saw play in uh constructed formats before commander and continues to see play today yeah card is super duper awesome uh it sort of worked on a different axis because the cycling thing and the minus two minus two yeah. uh, kind of kept some decks down. A decree of Annihilation, speaking of it, just like, I can't, man, in today's world, a cycling Armageddon. They would never. <laughs> they would never. Not even close. Never. Not even close. Unbelievable. Yeah, but uh, Decree of Pain is certainly sweet, and I can imagine it may not be the last decree we will talk about. So let's move on here to number eight. And it's not every day we get to have a same... In the lower numbers. That's oh. true. And I do love it because it's so unbelievably random. In this world of the hundreds and hundreds of cycling cards, of all the criteria you could have used, both myself and Ruben picked the exact same number eight. What was it, Ruben? Well, it's also a card we've had the privilege of previewing in the past. Mm. Uh, when we previewed Modern Horizons, they actually gave us two cycling cards. One of which was Gilded Light. I don't think we're going to be talking about Gilded Light in our Probably top not. ten cycling cards. But number eight on both of our lists is Crows and Tusker. Mm -hmm. Crows and Tusker is two green, five generic mana for a six, five. And is a common boar beast these days. Has cycling of two generic mana and a green. So for three mana, discard this card and draw a card. But when you cycle this card, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal that card, put it onto your hand, or put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So that is totally, like, it fixes you. It gets you another card. It's kind of ramp, but it's not. It puts a creature in the graveyard, so you can go on and reanimate it, because it's got a pretty decent body. Late game, you can play a 6-5. It's like, it's got all the elements there. Before creatures were really great, this was a really great creature. This yeah. is a green divination it draws two cards 
Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's always winning. This card, I played a lot of this card when I was getting ready to do the Vintage Masters had come out, uh, and I was getting ready for the Community Super League or the Community Cup uh, in 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 Renton, um, and we had to play that. And I remember just jamming a lot of this because it was all I knew, and I didn't have as much time to practice as anybody. But I knew how to cross and Tusker, and I knew how to reanimate, so that was the plan. <laughs> yep. That's a good yep. one. This right. card later inspired Sheffit Monitor from mm-hmm. Amon Cat. Um, very similar card. It's another six mana six five, uh, or a, another expensive six five, I should say, that cycles and gets you some some lands. Um, yeah, Crows and Tusker has had some time in the cube for quite a while, uh, just because it's green advantage, and that's not something you get every day. Yeah, Chef and Monitor tried to come back, uh, but had cycling of four mana and could find right. a basic land or a desert. And it could put it on the battlefield. And you could put it on the battlefield instead of putting it in your hand. So, uh, And that was great and all, but these days, eh, that's got to cost three, and it's got to yeah. go straight in the battlefield. Come on now. Yeah. All right. We move on here to Aaron's number eight. What you got? So my number eight is the first of many cards on my list that you can find in Living End, uh, because Living End is what I think of when I think of cycling. And this is a newer card. You know, it came out in Amonkhet, but I think anybody who's ever played Living End um, or just knows enough about it knew that this card could easily slot in there. And they do run at least a couple of copies. And so I'm really excited about this card. It's also a demon. So if you're any Rakdos EDH fans out there, if you're trying to do demon tribal, you can certainly find room for this card. Um, My number eight is Archfiend of Ifnir. Um, So Archfiend of Ifnir is three colorless and two black. It is a creature type demon from Amonkhet with flying, five power and four toughness. It has a cycling of two colorless. And whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. So a lot of times after you do the living end thing, you have sort of this, this extra, you have these extra cyclers laying around. And yeah, you can cycle them and just draw more crappy creatures, or you can whittle down your opponent's board so that they can't block your minotaurs and your carabids and things like that. Um, and it's also just a five, four, flyer at worst, which is fine. Um, I ran this in my Hapatra EDH deck where it was stupid. <laughs> um, and it is asymmetrical, so it does not affect you at all. It is literally just your opponent's creatures. Um, if you do build your deck correctly, it can feel a lot like a Doomwake Giant, which can be very oppressive in Commander. Um, and so I've had a lot of good times with this card. I think it's very creepy. I think it's good. Um, and I like cards that you know give cycling an engine to really play with, in this case with minus one, minus one counters. I, I wanted this, this was the... F- Sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. I, I, wanted, I wanted this card to be better than, than it ended up being, at least in yeah. Constructed. It was yeah. weird, you know, fringe yeah. at best, okay. But, like, in, in the Modern Living Index, that's awesome that it actually found a home because yeah. this thing was an, a ridiculous bomb and limited. It was just meteoric how yeah. insane dropping an Archfiend would be. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that this was the first card that we saw from Amonkhet. Um, when Maybe. they started spoiling the set and they were like, ooh, cycling's back. And now cycling does stuff, right? And that was that, that's very exciting. A very powerful card, obviously. Just all the numbers are, are good. Um, and I'm happy that it has a home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, five mana, five, four flyer with a pretty cool ability that has the ability that it needs to do something onto it. Yeah. Still not a constructed all-star during its day yeah. Yeah. because we're in modern magic times. All right. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Well, why would you pay five for your, know, right? your, your cycler when Peasant. I could have a five, four haste for four <laughs> god, right? Mm. Back in those days. Moving on here to number seven. Ruben, what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is one of... Several hires on someone else's list. Okay, Aaron, what's number seven? My number seven is a card that I was very, very happy to play with when it was standard legal. I've even played it in some older formats. Um, I love enchantments. Uh, the uh, deck that I played the most in Amonkhet Standard was Approach of the Second Sun. Um, and sometimes when you're playing a control deck, you know, your cards can be dead, where if your answers don't line up to their threats, or if you have them kind of over a barrel and you just need to find a way to turn the corner, um, you know, you do need to find other cards. And so being able to cycle these things away for, for better cards um, is a really, really good thing. And it's a neat twist on a beloved card. Um, my number seven is Cast Out. Um, so Cast Out is three colorless and a white. It's an enchantment from Amonkhet. It has flash, and it says when Cast Out enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. So it's it's an O-ring. <laughs> um, and if you don't like that, you can just cycle it for one white. And so if you're playing a control deck, you know you obviously want to be hitting your land drops, um, and so you're fine cycling this away because you're probably running more than one Cast Out. It's also an O-ring with flash, so instant speed is a really, really big deal um, because you want to make sure you're grabbing you know that, that 
that great threat the second you can. And, you know, you can also keep your mana open for a counter spell. So you can choose the way that you want to respond to something. You know, are you sitting on a negate? Okay, well, you can also just negate something or you can also cast it out. And so I love this card a lot. It does see play even in Legacy Enchantress because it's just an O-ring with flash mm -hmm. um, that you can also cycle. And so just very versatile removal and, and just a, a great white enchantment. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, when it came to Almond Cat Limited, there was how mana screwed are you? Are you a yeah. little mana screwed or are you or cycling you cast cycling out? Cast. Mana screwed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, girl. That was you the level. Thing. That was the level. <laughs> Yeah, cast out. I think is still in the vintage cube uh, to this wow. day. Uh, mm. I mean, instant speed cast out can't be underestimated. Yeah. The flip side of being able to draw a card for just the cost of one mana also mm -hmm. quite good. Yeah. So, um, and, and we spoke earlier about having one mana cycling. Maybe one generic mana. One cycling generic mana cycling is what really felt like uh, in my red white deck. I shouldn't be cycling black discard spells. Exactly. Uh, all right, so let's move on here to our number six. Ruben, do you have a number six? I do, and it's one of my all-time favorites. I'm very excited that I get to be the only one to talk about this card. It is a classic of cycling. Um, it's actually a classic of planes cycling, mm -hmm. because it has planes cycling of two. Um we are probably going to talk about um, Slide, Astral Slide, the deck, quite a bit. Uh, eventual, like over the course of this top 10. But one of the main ways that deck actually won after it was done, you know, blinking its Viridian Shamans and Eternal Witnesses enough and plow undering you enough to make you want to give up the game is that it actually had to just cast a creature and kill you with it. And one of the best ways to do that, and one of the only ways to do that, in fact, was Eternal Dragon. Mm, Eternal Dragon it. is five colorless and two white, seven mana, for a 5-5 five, five flying dragon spirit. That is all it can do whilst on the battlefield. However, it does have plane cycling of two colorless, which means that if you pay two and discard it, you can search your library for a planes card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And for three colorless white white, return eternal dragon from your graveyard to your hand, activate this ability only during your upkeep. So, uh, of course, Julian Neuton ended up winning Worlds in 2004 with Slide. Uh, uh, that was a very popular archetype. But Eternal Dragon was popular outside of just Astral, Slide, and, and Cycling archetypes. It was a finisher in Land Still, in Legacy, for a long time. Mm. Um, it saw play in Tron decks, because you had a bunch of this extra colorless mana. Well, why not throw a 5-5 five -five that you, know, can, you can get back after a Wrath of God onto the board? Um, just a very powerful, cool old dragon um, that has been reprinted a number of times since Scourge. It was originally a rare in Scourge. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think time has mostly passed Eternal Dragon by at this point. This was my number eight, or my number oh. nine, rather, sorry. Uh, because I think it absolutely deserves a list on the top X of all time. Eternal Dragon, during its day. This yep. is the early 2000s. Tell us, Grandpa. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Even the late 2000s. Even the I late mean, 2000s. It stayed, it stayed good for a long time. This was in my cube uh, pretty much into the moment I believe I sold it. Um, because Eternal Dragon was just a hell of a threat for the time. When you didn't have a lot of things like coming back for free and spells that give you 27 mana or whatever these days. You know, we had, we had to work for our graveyard recursion. And that meant five mana on our upkeep and then seven mana the next turn to play a 5-5 five, five flyer go. Yep. yep, that's where we were. But we got to search for one of those planes. It's true. So it, it did fuel itself. Kinda. This can search for a Savi Triome now. It in can. case you want to just keep cycling. Cycle forever. Aaron, what's number six? My number six is a card that saw a good amount of play in Standard and has continued to see play in Modern. One of the breakout decks of Modern lately is a really bizarre Gruul mid-range deck. Um, it's not quite Ponza. They do run Mages to the Moon, but they don't run like Stone Rains or anything like that. Um, it's just sort of a green-red value deck, and you can find a couple copies of this card in there. Another example of a really versatile board wipe that you can just cycle away if you don't need it. Uh, my number six is Sweltering Suns. Mm. Um, so Sweltering Suns, also printed in Amonkhet. It's one colorless and two red for a sorcery. That says Sweltering Suns deals three damage to 
each creature, and then you can cycle it for three colorless. So, um, you know, if you do need to kill off a little, you know, some little things, you can do that. If you don't need to kill them anymore, or if they've, you know, simply outgrown the spell, you can cycle it away for something better. Um, really great sideboard card, again, in these sort of Gruul Ponza decks, Amulet, the, when Green Red Titan was a thing, this is also another card you could kind of see in there. Um, yeah, just a really flexible board wipe, you know, kind of the anger of the gods of the set. Um, you know, Red does tend to get these sort of three mana board wipes uh, time and time again, and this was the um, Cat version, and, yeah. and really beautiful art too, right, Raymond Swanland, you know, you really do feel like you're there, you do feel like you can feel the sun on you, which is really hard to capture, and you, know, you almost want to like cover your eyes a little yeah. bit, you know. I mean, all the way back to Darksteel's Flame Break, mm -hmm. uh, Wizards has been very happy to have a three mana, they'll three damage to everything in some way. These days is Deafening Clarion. Right. Don't at worry. Flames. At Sorcery. At Sorcery speed, three damage to all creatures. Fire Spout. Yeah, it's great. Right. So they, they've, they've kind of done that throughout the years, and this was definitely one of the cool versions of that effect to be like, eh, you know, if they're not like boards on the uh, a body or the body on the board, rather, we just cycle it away. And still in the cube. Uh, nice. Extra, this is the go-to of those effects that's in the cube because you can, you're not embarrassed to main deck this against like the blue-white control deck that's not playing any creature as well. It's a little expensive to cycle, but you'd rather have, you'd rather pay retail to get rid of it and try again right. than have this, you know, flame break sitting in your hand for the rest of the game. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, for my number six here, uh, this is a, a classic. This was from the Urza block from one of the first block that had cycling. that created the cycling as we know it. Goodness gracious. While I'm not sure if we're going to talk about uh, the cancel version, I will tell you that when it comes to putting counter spells on cycling cards, mm -hmm. miscalculation was there for you. Yeah. Miscalculation was always there for you, whether you needed another card, you needed a mana leak the crap out of them, or I guess quench the crap out of them these days. Miscalculation is a blue and a generic mana for an instant. It was a common in Urza's legacy. It says counter target spell unless its controller pays two generic mana and it cycles for two generic mana. So uh, this card kind of does it all in that regard. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm never happy. I mean, I'm never unhappy with it in my opening hand. I'm never unhappy with it late. I'm going to cycle it away. And this to me is like, I, it's a bridge too far. Will they give it to you on cancel? Okay. Will they give it back to you on quench? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, this card uh, is great. Uh, one of the first articles I ever read about Magic the Gathering was a Academy Mirror. I believe between Zv and might have been like another European. Might have been like Sigurd Eskeland or something like that. It was like a it was it was a really complicated Academy Mirror, and they didn't know why the. Uh, Zv had sequenced a turn in such a way to not end up with his own academy untapped at the end of a turn, except for that he was playing around miscalculation, because miscalculation was a huge part of that mirror. Hmm. Being able to resolve your threats was not easy to do in that kind of a, uh, an environment. Miscalculation is spectacular. Uh, I collected all of Versus Legacy, and so I had you know, foil copies of miscalculation way back in the day. Love this cartoony art too, with yeah. Karn kind of uh, screwing up his, his lab experiment. Um, yeah. I, I, I love me a miscalculation. The, the faces on the kids on this card and the <laughs> hair, what is happening with that hair? Listen, Goodness. It's Good. my, don't make <laughs> it. It's uh, my 1999. Ruben's like, that kid is me. Yeah. Wow. Also, who are yeah? Who are these punk kids with their jeans jackets Get off and, and their Tolarian Academy jean jackets? As yeah, you do, a little, a little wild. Uh, Aaron, what's your number five? My number five is another card in the Popper deck that we talked about a little bit earlier, this Rise of Popper Storm that we're seeing. You know, obviously Drana Stinger's where you want to be, but, you know, if you do have to uh, blow your opponent out of counter spells, there are a couple of other ways that you can win the game. This is a card that I thought would see play in Living End, but it just wasn't really good enough to make the cut. Um, and so my number five is Horror of the Broken Lands. Mm. Um, so Horror of the Broken Lands is four colorless and a black. It's also from Amon um, 
Cat. Um, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, whenever you cycle or discard another card, Horror of the Broken Lands gets plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn, and you can cycle it for 1 black. So if they do happen to deal with the Stinger, or if you don't have the Stinger, um, you know, not only can you cycle this card to get your combo going, but you can also bring it back and just have a really big beater. Um, it has this kind of like Kiln Fiend effect on it, where if you just cycle it, it gets really, really big, um, and it doesn't take too much to make this thing really big and just kill somebody with it. And so I love the card, I love the art, um, and I love that this is seeing like competitive play, even if it is only in Popper. I mean, yeah, yeah for its one mana cycling, which is mm -hmm. fine. But this was a very classic card in the set itself, in that, uh, at least to me, was a very undervalued card when it first yeah. when it first came out. No one cared about it, whatever. And then before it was over, horror was like killing me a lot of the time yeah. in limited. It was ridiculous. It was just, well, it was always a six five. This was also a popular finisher in the tortured existence pauper decks. Nice. Um, you know those decks are mostly value, right? You do your right. cool grave scrabbler tricks, and you get like back your two three brown scale. Hey, we did it. But you need you had trouble like killing somebody. Right, actually, winning. and horror was a great way to kill somebody because early it could start your engine, late you could rebuy it, and then actually kill somebody. Very nice, yeah. Horror of the Broken Lands is a super cool four mana or five mana four four, uh, and there was a whole thing about when you cycle or discard. I mean, we've already talked about Arch Fiend. Um, I really enjoyed that kind of wording, uh, yeah, yeah. where it's not just about cycling. It could right. also just be you had to discard something. I like right. that a lot. I appreciate stuff like that. Yeah, things like Flame Blade Adept. Mm -hmm. Ruben, watch number five. Which saw play in the <laughs> Hollow One decks, um, which is my number five. I'm nice. going to talk about Hollow One. A lot of fans. love for uh, uh, Amonkhet block early in our mm -hmm. top ten here. This That's one, true. of course, from Hour of Devastation. Hollow One is a five colorless mana artifact creature golem. It's a four four. This spell costs you two colorless less to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn, and it does itself have cycling for two colorless i don't know why you would cycle a hollow one but you can i guess well, yeah. how really mana screwed to. are you <laughs> right how <laughs> mana screwed are you are we cycling a hollow one yeah. um of course alongside of aaron's invitational card bazaar of baghdad you can pretty much get free hollow uh, ones um also alongside things like goblin lore and burning inquiry Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are some great clips out there of Burning Inquiry, turn one, three hollow ones, right? Like, that's just a thing that is possible in Magic the Gathering. Yeah, I called this one, I saw this one coming from a mile away. The minute yeah. that card was spoiled, I just sort of did the math. I was like the lady in the math meme, where I was just yep. like... Yep, this card. <gasps> I was like, you can get this for free. And, um, you know, the one and only vintage challenge that I won was right around the time that Hollow One started to see play in vintage. I was one of the first ones to pilot that deck um, nice. and did very well with it. I went 3 0 my first time in the VSL with that deck. Um, and so I have a lot of fond memories of it. And it's coming back. You know, the all the new cycling cards in Ikoria means that people are playing with more cycling in modern. Yeah. And so I have seen a couple brews that are trying to bring this back. Um, Black Red Hollow One as a whole is not. Not really around anymore i think because faithless looting is gone um yeah. but for a while their goblin lore spiked to a 10 plus dollar card which oh, would yeah. <laughs> it, was um, it also sees play it was uh, with that, survival yeah. of the fittest you can pair this right. with venge vine um and so being able to venge dump a couple survive. of venge vines and play a free a free hollow one or two or a hollow one in a basking root walla i mean that's yeah. exactly where some people want to be i mean yeah. i've won games off the back of just this and like counter magic where it's like here's two hollow ones you will never play anything else, and I'll just kill you. Like, yep. it's the best feeling just in the world. basically play a Delver game where you're mm -hmm. just like, I have a, a cheap, efficient beater that does nothing but attack and block, but my hand is nothing but mana leaks. Yeah. So we a did it. Yeah. A 4-4 four, four for you, free. Get you, get we'll take it. Very nice. All right. So for my number five, um, this was another hit from Onslaught. Now, Onslaught is special to me because not because I, I, was, I played actual Constructed Magic during that time. I never got to play the Astral Slide deck. I never got to play Goblin Bidding or whatever. Um, but what I did get to do was to kind of sort of bounce back into Magic while, you know, before I kind of got my feet wet and constructed, I was playing around in Limited and I was playing around at the game store and I saw this card and I was like, oh my God, that card's insane. And I was like, holy cow, and you can cycle it too? That seems amazing. They're like, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And then the other half of this card in particular is that you will not ever get out of your head the guy's face in the bottom right going like that on a Chroma's Vengeance because yeah. it's yes. awesome. 
A Chroma's Vengeance is two white four generic mana for a rare sorcerer that says destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, and it has cycling of three generic mana. So three generic mana discard it, and you can draw a card, and that's insane. And a Chroma's Vengeance is great, and it's good early, and it's good late, and it's been in my queue or was in my queue for the moment I had the moment I didn't oh, have yeah. it, and <clears> it's still in the vintage cube, I believe. Like yes. this is a hell of a magic card, and has remained a hell of a magic card ever since two thousand and two. It's good in cycling decks, as proven by Osip Lebedovich in Pro Tour Venice 2003, which he won. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good in non-cycling decks. It's good in just the, the three-color veggies decks that, uh, mm -hmm. that were popular at the time as well. It's also seen play in Legacy. Oof. Six mana sorcery, seen play in Legacy. Jeez. Boy, what a world we used to live in. <laughs> Very popular in uh, EDH. Obviously, it was reprinted in Commander 2018 and Commander uh, 2020, yeah. and among another a number of uh, uh, places. Card is just absolutely spectacular. Yeah, super cool. It's a big story moment and stuff. Like, it's n nothing wrong with a Chroma's Vengeance. Yeah. Let's move on here to number four. Mine is higher on someone else's list. Ruben, do you have a number four? My number four, my number three, and my number two are all higher Oof. on someone wow. else's list. Goodness gracious. So like a tricycle? No. Just try. I want to try my tricycle. <laughs> oh, come on, vocals. Aaron, do you have a number four? I do. So my number four came at the right time. Uh, when Faithless Looting got banned in Modern, Dredge players were trying to figure out how they were going to come back from that because Faithless Looting is really the the fuel that kept our deck going. You know, obviously it, it was what we wanted to see on turns one and two, um, but it allowed us to keep going if we ran out of gas. So we were able to flash it back and keep dredging. And we really didn't know. There were some people that really thought it was going to be the end of the deck. Um, but Dredge being as resilient as it is, and thanks to a little set called Modern Horizons, uh, we were back in the game with my number four, which is Forgotten Cave. Um, so Forgotten Cave is part of a cycle. There's a series of lands like Bear and Moor uh, that come into play tapped. Um, and in this case, Forgotten Cave taps for a red. Um, you can also just cycle it for a red. So Modern Dredge, probably more than um, any other Dredge deck out there, relies on Life from the Loam a lot. And so while we don't have Faithless Looting, we do cast Life from the Loam an awful lot. And so being able to grab you know, a Forgotten Cave allows you to keep drawing cards and, and, and carry you into the mid to late game and while it's not as powerful as faithless looting it's still pretty darn consistent it does get the job done uh being instant speed also matters too being able to you know try to hit a narc amoeba and get a blocker if you needed to um you know and you can also you know make your land drops if you want to but you know this card really just came at a good time because we weren't sure what we were going to do um and then it wasn't if i'm if i'm under if i remember correctly it wasn't modern legal till modern horizons that's correct um, yeah. and so it was a huge boon for us i was literally about to say like i think wizard kind of missed their window to make putting the cycling lands in the one mana cycling lands into modern exciting about five to seven years ish mm -hmm. something like that because by the time they showed up in modern horizons it's like okay we, we're going to yeah. go over here and do this other thing yeah we needed we needed those back when aggro loam was like a playable deck <laughs> mm -hmm. uh although forgotten cave has seen play in aggro loam decks um mm -hmm. i don't know if we'll talk about any of the other cycling lands going forward i don't want to step on anybody's toes but uh, Forgotten Cave in particular, great in Agro Loam, great alongside uh, Life from the Loam, the Lands deck in Legacy, mm -hmm. loves Forgotten Cave. Uh, Forgotten Cave was um, a uh, uh, really popular in the Astral Slide decks, of course, back in the day, and now they're legal in Historic uh, mm -hmm. on, on Magic Arena. Yeah, all the one mana cycling lands got put into historic and arena, which means that also they were put into the cube, and that's going to be awesome because you play with real players soon. Right. Freaking pumped. Yeah. All right, let's move on here to number three. You saying we haven't forgotten the forgotten cave? Oh, boy. oh yeah. All right. <laughs> Everybody want to act like they got something to say. <laughs> wow, forgot about cave. Okay. Oh, okay. oh nice. I love it. I love it. Aaron, what's number three? My number three is a card that I. If you had told me that this card would see play in not one, but two broken combo decks in Modern and Legacy, I would have never believed you because it just... I, I don't get it. It's like a rampant growth. I don't understand. Uh, my number three is Edge of Autumn. <laughs> yeah. 
So Edge of Autumn is one colorless and a green. It was originally printed in Future Sight. It is a sorcery. If you control four or fewer lands, search your library for a basic land card, put it into play tapped, and then shuffle your library. You can also cycle it by sacrificing a land. Um, this sees play in the Neo brand decks in Modern because uh, what this deck wants to do is get really, really low and then win with like a Lab Maniac or a Thassa's Oracle or something like that. Um, and so, you know, you this is something that you can do to kind of get you closer to that goal. It also sees play in Legacy Doomsday, again with Thassa's Oracle. You know, with Doomsday, it's all about those piles. And so you need something that can sort of crack the pile. And this is a really great way that you can do that. These decks tend to run very few lands as is. And so you're very careful not to play too many. Um, and I just, I couldn't believe the first time I ever saw this the other day. I was playing Modern and I was like, I had to read the card. It was like, I'm, I'm sorry? Like, yeah. what? You don't even have green. I just, I didn't get it. I, it was, I was blown away. And here we are. Yeah. If this is directly from Future Sight. Don't let the dual decks, Knights versus Dragons, <laughs> fool you. That's right. This is a weirdo card that's super weird. Doesn't make <laughs> any sense in our current environment. Yeah. They didn't like giving us a rampant growth until just recently when they're like, hell, have all the mana you want forever. Um, right. <laughs> but like Edge of Autumn was just like this weirdo thing of like, it's a rampant growth, but only for the four or fewer lands. What? But you can cycle mm-hmm. the draw cards late. Sure. It was a weird yeah. draft card for me. I didn't really play a lot in Constructed. So for me, this is just a weirdo card all around right but i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i think this is the only card that i mean that cycles for no mana is that accurate uh street wraith you pay life. oh street wraith you get you pay life yep. sure but you know you you do what you can to get by i mean obviously cycling for two it's fine lots of cards cycle for two a lot of them are good a lot of them are great cycling for one as we've discussed completely stupid and busted Wow, cycling for zero. Even at the cost of sacrificing a land, who cares, right? Hot fire. Hot, Dex hot play, fire. Dex play Reign of Filth so that they can sacrifice their tapped <laughs> lands, let alone this. So yeah. yeah, especially if you know that you're going to win the game anyways. Like, Reign of Filth, yeah, you said. This card is dope. My number three, because Ruben doesn't have one, he's higher. Uh, this card is so cool. This card is like, when I started playing Popper, I was like, oh my god, that's common? I was like, are you for <laughs> real? Oh my God. And like, it sees play. It doesn't seem like a ton of play. Uh, I, was, I was honestly expecting this to be sort of one of the most powerful things you could do in Popper because it's super cool to have a card from all the way back in Urza's Legacy still be relevant today. Unearth is my number three. Mm-hmm. Unearth is dope. It is one black mana for a sorcery that says return target creature card with a converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield and has cycling of two generic mana. And this effect is sweet and is just as good as you think it is and just reanimates the tiny stuff, but sometimes it's all you need to reanimate. Now in Modern, um, it was part of the uh, Mardu Pyromancer deck. Yeah. Um, you know, Modern Horizons really opened up a lot of doors for people and, um, you know, still sees play as like a one of, you know, sometimes you'll see with like a Monastery Mentor or something silly. Um, but yeah, I, I love this card and I'm, I'm surprised it doesn't see more play it's true i know that early on when snapcaster mage first became legal and standard mm-hmm. uh one of the things that they started messing with was putting unearth in a snapcaster mage tarmogoyf deck uh um, just it does appear about a year ago there was seen play in more uh, death shadow decks sure yep. great it's another great one to bring back you know death shadow season pyromancer anything like that size uh, is great, and most of the format's creatures are going to be that size because it's constructed magic. And if you're paying four mana, I mean, you pay three mana for Doomsday, you better win the game with just the one card at four yeah. mana. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, first place Magic Fest uh, Birmingham 2019 by Rory Keir Smith had two copies in the main deck. Wow. With, uh, yeah. So that's cool. Let's move on here to number two. Aaron, what's number two? I really struggled with this because I was tempted to make this my number one, but my number one had actually been banned in a format, so that kind of bumped it up a little bit. But my number two is a card we've discussed throughout the show. I mean, there's just nothing else like it. Um, you know, obviously it was an auto included in the Living Index. It's also been good enough to see play in other decks as well. Um, Legacy Dredge plays it because you can do some stupid things with the stack and Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, it's just, it's just so good. You know, we, we played a couple in Doomsday the other day. Um, and the card really does speak for itself. My number two, Street Wraith. Mm. Um, so Street Wraith is three colorless and two black. It's a creature type Wraith originally printed from Future Sight. 
right. Um, it is a 3-4 with Swamp Walk, and that is surprisingly relevant sometimes. Um, and it's cycling and you pay two life. And so if you're playing Death Shadow, this is exactly what you want to be doing because you're drawing cards and, and lowering your life. When Legacy Death Shadow became a thing, yep. you wanted to reanimate this. Like, mm-hmm. that was the ideal turn one. Like, yep. I remember reading LSV's guide about this after the Pro Tour, and he, it was a very thorough guide, and like, I just did not anticipate yep. him going, you know what you want to be doing on turn one? Reanimating a Street Wraith. And it was like, what? Yep. <laughs> Um, because, you know, you would lose five life. And so Swamp Walk is very relevant sometimes. Um, you know, you, you do your living in, you bring this back, and you can sometimes just kill people with this and keep up some blockers. Um, the card is just extremely versatile. Like I said, you can crack Lion's Eye Diamond, and if you have a Dredger in the yard, you can do Cycle, Street Wraith, Hold Priority, and then whoop! <laughs> And there have been times I have just fueled my graveyard using that. And so it's hilarious. It can crack your doomsday piles if you're playing doomsday. Um, I just love it. And I'm so glad that it's a thing. Yep. I, this was my number seven, by mm-hmm. the way. Nice. I don't think we're going to see Swamp Walk or any type of land walk anytime soon. Oh. I also don't think we're going to see Pay to Life cycle <laughs> anytime like soon. Like Phyrexian mana? What? No, Jeepers. no, this card was from Future Sight, was weird, showed up in Modern Master sets, so it could make its way through Modern and do silly things there. Right. Um, and it's a black creature for mm-hmm. Icarid. Mm-hmm. Yep, does all the things you want. It does all so the like, stuff. My favorite thing to do with it is um, because people in Legacy love Surgical Extraction, and sometimes you get people who don't know any better, so they'll target a Dredger, and then you're like, whoop! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you cycle your Grave right. Troll, and then the Surgical Blanks. It is the yeah. best feeling in the world. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. So for my number two here, uh, this is a card with a ton, a ton of history. This is a card that ran a format, far as I know, more or less as soon as it got printed. Over the years, other cards of its cycle have gotten more popular. Other cards of its cycle, for example, have seen their way into uh, EDH decks from Aaron. But when you go back and you look at the pedigree of decree of justice this thing ran the format when it was live when it was legal it was unbelievable decree of justice is two white two generic mana xx now this is the retail so if you're going to pay a million mana xx for a rare sorcery that says put x four four white angel creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield has cycling of a white and two generic mana so for a white and two, you discard it to draw a card. And when you cycle Decree of Justice, you may pay X generic mana. If you do, put X 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. It's not an XX flying shark, we know. But back in the day, all it needed to be was a bunch of soldiers to run you over. Basically, yeah. 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 This was very popular uh, alongside Ramp, mostly in Wake decks. Mm-hmm. I was a big Wake fan back in the day. Because sure. not only would you double up your lands, you'd give your creatures plus one, plus one, so your cycled decrees would be massive. Mm. Also popular in slide decks, in the cycling decks. It was a finisher in control decks, uh, yeah. particularly standstill, because you're cycling. Um, mm. Card's just incredible. Uh, inspired both Entreat the Angels, eventually, and Shark Typhoon, eventually. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's it's the t- it's the tops. Yeah, a card has been seen play in Tron. It's in there. The Rift Slide deck was there. There's blue-white control stuff. Green, white-green slide was in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, slide decks up and down one side or the other. Astro Slide, the fact that the Astro Slide triggered on your opponent's cycling as well. Yeah, is the they fixed that. They the fixed dumbest. that with Escape Protocol in yeah. the new set. Yes unbelievable i like my friend mentioned i was like oh my god for real yeah wow it's why it's why slide was so favored against affinity is because they would be like attack you with a 20 slash 2 frog might and you're like all right blanket like who cares mm-hmm. <laughs> sure blanket whatever uh was this on your list anywhere ruben uh yes uh this was my number three nice all right uh because i don't you know number as we yes. crunch the numbers it's impossible Indeed, for us to not was- have this was my number three. Nice. All right. So let's move on here uh, to number one. Goodness gracious, Ruben, tell us what your number one is. Yeah. My number one, I don't know if it's on anybody else's list, but I was going through what are the most impactful cyclers of all time? What are the most unique cyclers of all time? And for my money, this card is the reason why one of the most popular legacy decks of all time works. It's Gem Palm Incinerator. Oh, oh boy. Mm-hmm. Gem Palm Incinerator is a two colorless and a red 2 1 goblin with cycling of a colorless and a red. 
When you cycle Gem Palm Incinerator, you may have it deal X damage to target creature where X is the number of goblins on the battlefield. So this was originally part of a cycle of Gem Palm creatures. Um, none of the other Gem Palm creatures were nearly as popular, although Polluter sees some play in um, uh, Commander, I yeah. think, in those Zombies decks. Uh, but the other ones did not really do anything. Uh, Incinerator, on the other hand, very popular for a very mm. long time. It's appeared in both uh, dual decks that have had goblins in it. The first one, Elves versus Goblins, and the last one, Merfolk versus Goblins, hmm. um, which I thought was interesting. That's uh, and and so and and th- that deck really needs a way to clear the way, right. right? You need something to take care of your opponent's Delver, your opponent's Deathrite Shaman, whatever, what have you. Um, and Gem Palm Incinerator effectively was destroy target creature, draw a card for two mana in that deck. And in a pinch, you could also play it. Like, gather round, children. <laughs> Back in my day. Tell us more, Grandpa. Wizards would pick the winners and the losers. Winner, they would basically figure out, okay, we have a mechanic or a thing. For Onslaught, it was tribal. And they said, which tribes do we want to be successful? And they yeah. clearly chose zombies and goblins, because for the wizard's versions of this, it makes creatures fly. Yeah. This one destroys a creature, draws a card. Wizards can fly. Like, mm-hmm. it's just it's just actual straight terrible. So wizards would build these types of decks, give you the exact, like, drops that you need in those numbers, and there wouldn't be any question about it. It would be like, this is the three drop, you're playing pile drivers or whatever, that's what you're going to play, and you're going to play your incinerators and play your, palm, your, uh, your uh, pile drivers, and that's just the deck, and that's just how it works. Mm-hmm. And that's what and wizards buy- would do. And oh, by the way, uh, Gem Palm Incinerator has won a Pro Tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In Slide, not in Goblins. Jeez. It was just to cycle. That's insane. It fought alongside it. Akroma's Vengeance mm. and Renewed Faith, which I guess we're not talking about today. It's true. But uh, yeah, all of those uh, all of those Goblins, doesn't, doesn't matter. Just cycle Gem Palm to draw a card. Yeah, and, and when we came back around to Lore One, which was the first tribal walk after Onslaught, uh, it was they started making goblins. They're almost like, oh god, you're not gonna make the goblin deck the best thing, are you? You know, they, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. Don't they worry. Didn't make the goblin deck. Although Boggart shenanigans won Sam Black a truck. It's true. <laughs> Sam Black does win cars. If you, don't know, Sam. if you don't know how, oh, how is that what the key works. around his neck is for the truck? Just not for the maybe. truck. I don't think so. <laughs> not for the truck. Aaron, what's number one? My number one, to my knowledge, and feel free to come and correct me if I'm wrong, is the only card with cycling that is banned in a format. So far. So far. Um, it's banned in Popper, and then, you know, it doesn't take too much to get banned in Popper. Um, and so it's just, you can't. <laughs> yeah. So there's damn fairies, man. Uh, my number one's Cloud of Fairies. Nice. Um, so Cloud of Fairies is one colorless and blue, is originally printed in Urza's Legacy for some summon fairies, y'all. Uh, one power and one toughness with with flying when it comes into play untap up to two lands and it is cycling for two colorless and so this was banned on january 18 2016 looking at the announcement here uh the reason why is because there was an esper familiars deck that ran cards like sunscape familiar and nightscape familiar uh which reduced the cost of blue spells to the point where your cloud of fairies and your snaps were essentially free um and so you would combine this with bounce lands which would effectively produce mana and you would do something like ghostly Flicker targeting Cloud of Fairies and a Mnemonic Wall. That mm-hmm. nets you mana, getting back the Ghostly Flicker. You make enough mana, the Ghostly Flicker can target a Seagate Oracle. Instead of the Cloud of Fairies, you're looking for Sage's Row Denison to be able to just mill your opponent. And so if yep. you weren't playing a blue deck, you really had no way to deal with this. And so it made Popper quite miserable, um, and that's the reason why it had to go. I think it just sees play in general fairy strategies anyways, um, because yep. fairies, known, fairies is known for being a tempo deck, and so giving a tempo deck just two lands you can do a lot with just two lands and so um the card is deceptively good and if you're good enough to get banned i'm a fan yep. this was my number four yeah. this was my number two Woo. um to to put i mean this card having cycling is kind of I, i'm you don't really cycle this it's the silliest uh, in draft thing. in draft you did because a <laughs> sure. one one flyer who cares but this card was extremely popular in decks like high tide mm-hmm Alluren. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Zero Effect, which was the Fluctuator deck that Zvi Mauschewitz played uh, at Pro Tour New York 99. Um, and even today, it's still popular in Peasant, 
where you can play it alongside favorable wins. Woots. This card is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> the reason it's in the top five of all of our list is because it starts out free. That's yeah. where you start is the free part. Yeah. And then you keep making it more free to, yep. to it gets to like, you know, this is when the oil futures went upside down. They started to pay to make them hold the oil right. instead of selling as gasoline. If you think Edge of Autumn is free, if you think Street Wraith is free, boy, Cloud of Fairies is actually free. Yeah, it's just dumb. I want to, I mean, like the, the, I can imagine the people who cycled this card had to definitely be playing 40 card decks because yeah, it doesn't do anything cool. fair in 60 card decks. It's absolutely insane. Uh, Cloud of Fairies is super duper powerful. But to finish out Ruben's hires list, this has to be his number four via process of elimination. This is the card that I chose as the number one with a bullet because this card has been printed a ton of times and they had to print it a ton of times because they didn't. It's going to be a million dollars because it started to get really expensive before they decided to print it again. My number one is Ash Barons. Ash Barons oh, is a very right. simple magic card. It's incredibly yeah. awesome. That's what's so cool about it. I, I like it so much. It's just a land that taps for a colorless mana. That's right. The Wingding taps for a colorless mana and has basic land cycling of one generic mana. So for one generic mana, you discard this card. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. So you can go find any land you want whenever. This is one of the ultimate casual cards. Thankfully, this is just common. Wizards have been putting it in a bunch of commander decks, which is appreciated. Uh, and I, I love it. I love Ash Barons. I thought it was sweet, and I've loved playing with it, too. It is yeah. so close to being obnoxious, <laughs> Ash Barons is. It's so close. Because it's right there. Because it's so ubiquitous. Uh -huh. Yeah. You can put it anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the argument against it. The people that don't like Ash Barons are like, well, every deck runs four of it, yeah. um, which is a problem. Uh, and, but especially for Pauper, they were getting up to like eight bucks a piece mm -hmm. yeah. and there was only one printing of Ash Barons. Uh, yeah. Cards absurd. Yeah, cards and so it also makes a great drag name. Ash, Ash Barons. Yeah. That's nice. Now, yeah. Coming to the main stage, Ash Barons. Yeah, exactly. We could do a little better than that. Give her a welcome. Goodness Ladies gracious. and gentlemen, coming to the main stage, Ash Barons. Yes. Oh yeah. Woo. Yeah. If there's any aspiring drag queens watching, you're welcome. Put some stank on that. We That's need to right. have a top 10 magic drag names episode. Just, yeah. I see. Telling you, Earthshaker Kenra, get a big old body clean. Earthshaker Kenra is a uh, nice. It's pretty great. I like that one. <laughs> and that was our top 10 cycling cards. You'll see them on the screen right now for your review. Take a look at my list, Aaron's list, Ruben's top 10. And we want to hear from you about what card we did not talk about. And we'll select our favorite to win a $50 gift certificate at CoolStuffInc.com. But before we go, I want to thank my co-host. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. So I just watched Beetlejuice, and now that you've said Earthshaker Kenra, I'm now thinking, shake, shake, shake a Kenra, <laughs> shake your body right. Work, work, work a Kenra, work it all the time. And we're moving to work, our final work, slide. Work, all the time. We want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardWorder.com, my co-host, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching or listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. See, I've learned to just keep going. <laughs> follow like tweet favorite share subscribe and do everything Profession. social tells people we exist catch us online on twitch.tv at magic mics on twitter at magic mics cast our magic mics subreddit and like the magic mics page on facebook talk to us privately at magic mics podcast at gmail.com follow the audio only podcast at magic mics podcast .com, or find us on itunes and spotify or join us here next week same time same place for another episode of magic mics good night everybody